Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Facebook Live with Superintendent Cindy Martin. I'm here to just join everybody and welcome parents, students, family members, community members. It's nice to be able to have this chance to get together. And if you haven't noticed already, we're going to be doing this every Monday at 11 o'clock. So it's good to have people join us. Last week, we had just under 100 people join us for Facebook Live and lots of great comments and questions and people joined in and there were parents, community members, students, family, my own brother, Charlie joined and I think my mom is joining, my son might be joining. So this uh, is a great way to get out and talk to people what, even though we can't get out to talk to you in person to be able to join together like this. Um, I wanna talk this week a little bit about um, teacher appreciation. This is teacher appreciation week and Boy, do we appreciate our teachers more than ever. And teacher appreciation is something that I always made a big deal about when I was a principal at a school, when I was in City Heights at Central Elementary. Appreciating our teachers is so important. And for those of you that don't know, I mean, I want you to think about a teacher that made a difference in your life. Uh, parents are definitely having a whole new appreciation for our teachers these days. And our teachers are able to connect to their um, families and friends and being able to have people, uh, I, I hear from a lot of parents actually saying, wow, this teaching is hard and we want to definitely share our love to our teachers. So I was a teacher for 17 years in the classroom. I love teaching. I was just thinking about some of my friends on Facebook that were my former students. They're in their 30s now. And so um, I remember when I was a teacher how much it meant to me to hear from my students and during teacher appreciation. Actually, a couple of things to show you. One of my students gave me this. I had a little apple collection when I was a teacher and, you know, an apple for the teacher. That was what people used to say. And this was one, something one of my students gave me back when I was a classroom teacher. Um, I also, so for parents out there, in case you're wondering, do teachers appreciate the way that you um, write them a little note, send them a little card? A little something. This is this is about 30 years old now. This was a, a gift I got one year for teacher appreciation. Teachers cannot live by apples alone, and it's a um, cookie jar that we had in our classroom. And then another apple for the teacher. So little things that just showed how we're connecting and how we're um, appreciating teachers right now. And so you know, if you're home with your kids, sending a little note, send a little card. We love to see what you're doing during this time. I think having a daily time to do something with gratitude, even if it's not teacher appreciation week, just someone to say thank you to. I think that's really important. I see Bell, Bella Bell is on here saying she appreciates all the teachers and all the ways that you make people, teachers feel special and make, make our students feel special. Appreciate that. And um, Sharon Louise, nice to see you. I know you miss working and um courtney hi hi courtney nice to see you thank you for joining roger just joined and he wants to know if we have any ideas of what school will look like in august and lots of people are wondering about that what will school look like and across the country people are asking the question what will all kinds of things look like as we change um, protocols we want to make sure things are safe and that when we, we open when it's safe to open and so um, we don't have final answers on any of that, but we definitely want to make sure that we're working, coordinating with the local health authorities and if social distancing is still important, if we have testing and tracing and tracking and the kinds of things that you hear the health authorities speak about are things that are important for us to always be mindful of and what will this actually look like? We're not quite there and being able to say that exactly, Roger, but we're very much working on it in coordination with the, at the state level and really at the federal level too. Everybody is wanting to ask those same questions, but there's a local context and the state context and our governor's um, stay at home orders are still in effect and looking to Wilma Wooten and our county superintendent talking countywide. There's 42 school districts that are all asking those same questions. So um, thanks Marjorie for joining us. You said hats off to all teachers. Absolutely. Hope you let your teachers know that you feel that way. Um, Courtney is asking if our online enrollment is opened for our neighborhood schools yet. Um, I believe it's open. We'll have somebody that's from our communications team is watching too and they can let us know if that's uh, put the information in there in the we'll put it in the comments about how to connect for enrollment and if that's already open and you're able to do that. And Tim, thank you for joining. Um, you at mentioned uh, 
welcome for the updates. And you said Gavin Newsom mentioned schools might be starting in July. What might that look like? That was a comment that he made. Of course, he knows that, like we all know, that we can't open until we make sure that it's safe to do so. And when I say it's safe to do so, it needs to be safe for our employees, for our students. We have medically fragile students, students maybe who have asthma. And we need to make sure that it's safe community-wide and the progress that we've made, we wanna be able to continue that progress in terms of the health metrics. And so we don't know exactly, You know, the governor said that would be great if we could do that. We have to look at funding for that. We have to make sure that it's safe and we have to work with all of our families and our, and our educators around what that could possibly look like if we need to adjust and modify what school looks like when we do open. And although when we closed, it was a, a very quick closure on March 13th, we don't think opening is a quick opening where you just flip the switch and open. You have to put in place all of the things that will make sure that our community is safe and that folks understand the process that we're using. So I appreciate that question, Tim. Lots of people have that question. You're not the only one. Roger also asked that. So it's really, really important. Um, it's good to get feedback from people and to hear what you're thinking, what you're what you've been experiencing and the kinds of questions that you have when the governor makes big statements at the state level. It's definitely something we all pay attention to and then figure out locally how do we implement that and what will that look like um, to make sure that learning happens. I think here we are into our distance learning. I, um, I have some new numbers, the number of meals that we've served. We've got over 50,000 meals per day. I think as soon as the closure started, two of the big commitments that I knew I needed to make for our children and our community was that there would be a continuity of, learn of learning and a continuity of food and nutrition services because so many of our families are dependent upon school to have meals and nutrition. And when schools are closed, how would that continue to happen? And I need to give a big thank you to all of our food service workers. Um, last Friday was appreciation for the food service workers and we celebrated them on Friday and they truly are on the front lines of ensuring our families have continuity for nutrition. And there were families that maybe before this crisis were not dependent upon the school and school meals and they have become dependent during this crisis. We've hear, heard of families who both care, um, providers have lost their jobs and they were waiting for their unemployment or whatever their case may be. These are families that have become dependent upon our schools. And so I'm proud to say that we've served, we're, we're averaging now 50,000 meals per day. We're working with the San Diego Food Bank and with Feeding San Diego to make sure not just the school meals that we're distributing, a breakfast and a lunch, and then enough food to last through the weekend as well. We've added that when we also have Feeding San Diego and um, the food bank augmenting what we're providing in terms of the school meal for the students. And that 50,000 meals a day average is phenomenal. Um, total meals as of March 16th were 770,385. Fact for the day, um, I think it's gonna be fairly soon that we'll get to a million meals served. And I think that that just shows our community what's happening. Oh, I have to catch up on some of the comments. Sorry about that. Cheryl Ward, you joined us. Hi, Cheryl. Nice to see you. I, I was trying to watch the comments as it came and I was busy talking. Oh, it's good to see you from Texas. Cheryl's part of our Facebook Live right now. Thank you. Um, I was just updating on the meals and I also want to talk about the computers, our Chromebooks. We have distributed over 50,000 Chromebook computers when we're doing our soft launch of distance learning. And now we have Chromebook exchange centers. So if you're experiencing a problem with your computer, you need to exchange it. You can go to Claremont, Crawford, Hoover, Lincoln, San Diego High, weekdays from 9 to 4 p.m. If we need to do an exchange, we'll be doing that exchange. So uh, let's see here. Thank you, Marjorie, for recognizing our teachers. Um, just checking out some more. Um, oh, yay, this is uh, Aquamarine. You said thanks for all you do for your daughter and Ms. Gutierrez and Ms. Sorates and Ms. Nunez. I think you're a central parent because I recognize those, um, I recognize those names just from Central. So it's good to see you on here, Aquamarine. That's your Facebook name that you're using on here. Um, and I see Sarah, thanks for your question. You said some people might already have plans in July and that's what when the governor said we're going to start school in July, that maybe worried some people that had plans. And so, like I said, we'll look at this locally and make sure that it's safe and that we're able to 
do it in a way that makes sense. And we do understand, Sarah, that people do have plans and the distance learning, even now with distance learning, over 90% of our families have connected and are working with their teacher and learning. I'm so proud of that. And people are keeping the learning going and um, hats off to our teachers for that. Um, some, uh, Patty, thank you for joining. You were asking for custom approaches for different schools needs. You said your son's a 10th grader and he hasn't let up at all on his studying and schoolwork from the teachers. You, you said he barely even had time for spring break and your third grade niece has had a lot of instruction and assignments and probably will need summer school. And so that really does represent your question there, Patty, represents what we believe we want to customize this one, make sure it's meeting each individual student's needs and family's needs and kids are at different places. And just like when schools are open, as teachers have different, different teaching styles and approaches and different content that they want to be able to teach. And we do understand that everybody's at a very different place. That's why our board adopted our grading policy, that there would be a hold harmless policy, knowing that people are in lots of different situations. And we want to be able to um, be um, thoughtful and have some resilience and understanding some grace around where each family might be and what the teachers might be doing. Um, Kristen is asking if we had any updates on the class of 2020 high school graduations. Our board had a group of students working on that and they are coming up with recommendations about what this might need to look like. Um, so we'll check that out. And I think I have another question. Um, hold on. My whole Facebook just shut down. So hopefully I'm still live because it completely off my ice cream. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, um, Patty also asked about summer school for kids and that needed but shouldn't be required because some kids have to continue to work very hard and yeah we understand that appreciate that. Uh, are there any updates regarding graduation again that as well. Oh hi Derek I just did it I didn't notice that you had joined Derek joined that nice to see you. Um, you said, thank you for holding the Facebook Live. You think having direct communications like this is a great idea. I do too. So it's very nice to see you and see that joined. And we're working also with Mahogany to make sure that um, she's actually going to be, I think, working with our parents group. I think in the future, this Facebook Live every Monday at 11, this is when I'm doing it. And by the way, if you can't tune in when this is happening live, it's recorded and you can watch it later. I know people have schedules that are different and they might not be able to do that. So um, there was a question from Kristen Fernandez, a task force made up of students from each high school. Oh yeah, Kristen's question was about high schools. I think I already answered that and Heather already asked. So there's a lot of questions about graduation. So the student task force um, came up with ideas of what we can do to um, make sure that we're able to do something with graduation. What will that look like? And while it looks like physical, graduations may not be possible. The kids have been tasked by the board to come up with recommendations of what this could look like towards the end of the year. So appreciate that question. Um, Carlos, good to see you. See that you just joined. I might be a little bit late on the on the um, comments here. I'm trying to catch up to them as they come. This is great. We have 165 people have joined us. That's awesome. It's nice to have you. And I've got 39 comments. So, oh, my brother joined us. I see Charlie Cohen, it's actually under the name Robert, but that if you see the comment that says, hi, best sister in the whole wide world, that's my brother, Charlie. Hi, Charlie, nice to see you. I'm glad that you joined us today for Facebook Live at 11 o'clock. Good to see you. Thank you for typing his questions. For those of you that haven't met my brother, Charlie, uh, maybe I'll have him join one of these times, but Charlie um, is uh, went to school in San Diego Unified. He has developmental disabilities and I'm very proud of him and how he's handling this crisis with the what he has to do to stay in quarantine and wear his mask and do everything with his care providers. And a big thank you to Robert and the whole team that takes care of my brother. That's why students with disabilities has always been something that's so important to me, um, near and dear to my heart. So it's nice to have Charlie join us this morning. Um, Girina, it's nice to see you again. You were uh, mentioning that the parents from City Heights would like to know how will the graduation for Hoover be, and we would like to know how will the calendars for different meetings be um, as a cluster. Those are good questions to have at the local level. I think I've already addressed the high school, the graduation ones. We're still working on that, getting our feedback from the student. So 
So that's going to be um, something important for everybody to know about. And the meetings for the Hoover Cluster, I think you should talk to the Hoover Cluster principals about that, see what they have to say. I hope a lot of groups are meeting using virtual meetings like this. I'm doing live and people are meeting using different platforms. So I think there's a way that they can keep on doing that. Um, so some more questions we have here. Um, let's see. Linda, nice to have you join us. You said your son's in fifth grade and he will be in sixth grade when the school year is over. How is enrollment going to go for me and for him? He is going to knock. So we're going to post more information. If you all haven't gone to our, our distance learning page, the district website is San Diego distance learning.org and FAQs are in there, including the enrollment um, information for how you can enroll and what to expect with enrollment. Um, Emily, you just said that LA just announced that they were open August 16th. I that I didn't hear that. It's news from today, and my I'm not sure what the details are about that. Like I said earlier about opening, it's local decisions, but it's also based on what the health authorities say and in guidance from our governor and the health officials to make sure it's safe to do so. Um, Allison's asking, is there an update on if the schools will officially be closed for the remainder of the school year? We are in learning at the point with over 90% of our students connected to their teachers and year-round schools are coming up and running and we're going to stay in this distance learning model. We have no guidance at this point that that would change. We want to be successful with the distance learning, make sure kids have access to learning and that they continue. Um, Emily is asking what's the expectation for tuition for pre-K and for all of the remainder of the year. You've called the office many times with no response. Emily, let me have somebody get back to you on that so we can answer your questions. I'm not sure which office you're calling, but we'll get somebody to get back to you on that. Um, so, by the way, if I miss any questions, because I'm scrolling through them very quickly and I'm doing them as they, as they come, then I miss a few. So if I miss some, we have our communications team is also monitoring the chat and anything that we didn't get to, we will certainly either respond right here live in the chat or we'll have somebody get back to you. Um, and oh, chat, thank you for joining. That's a teacher. You missed my beginning. You're a great teacher. Your Facebook posts have been phenomenal, so inspiring. And this is a teacher who teaches students with abilities at a year round school. And he posts some of the most inspirational comments about the grace that we need to have and how we're here to help your students learn and that things might be different, but we're here for you. And you're asking the question um, if schools can return to some form in July for the last weeks of school for the next school to be as regular scheduled. Those are all things that we're thinking about. We're not 100% sure how that would go, but that's a very good question for you around schools. And again, we go back to when it's safe is when we will be thinking about how to open, what it will look like, and that we can ensure safety and that we have the proper um, supports to make sure that that happens. But I'm so glad you joined. You are super inspirational. Um, your posts that you have been sharing them with other people. So love to see what you're doing out there. Um, Emily's asking if we're changing the ESY dates that you can't plan anything until we know what those dates are for your student um, with ability. So we're very close to the final decisions about that. We'll be getting that information out soon. Not 100% sure yet if the dates are going to change. If they're adjusted, we'll make sure that we get that information out. And I understand that you need to know that to plan. So those plans are definitely in the work. Um, Nancy, nice to see you. Thanks for holding these lives. You're an SC in the district, so it's good to see you joining us. Thank you, Nicole, you do. Um, Carrie O'Leary, good to see you. Um, it's important. I want to just keep giving these updates and keep having the conversation. Robert Lasseter wanted to know principals and parents want to um, know about the school schedules for next year. Those are all, it seems like there's a theme question. Some of the things are things that we don't know yet. We're working on the distance learning at this point and on the continuity of meal services and learning services and some of those questions around when are we open and what will the schedules be like we don't know yet and it's not just san diego unified that doesn't know it's really around the whole state and us being able to make sure that we're looking at the right targets around what when it's going to be safe open um derek you joined us we have a great principal from zamorano looks like he joined if you joined like 10 minutes ago, Derek, I'm sorry. I'm still trying to catch up to the uh, the the in quickly, but it's nice to have you. Derek's our principal at Zamorano. It's 
good. You, you have some super inspirational posts that you've been putting on your Zamorano Facebook page and on your Twitter account. I think you were the school that maybe got it started where each teacher held a little sign and then you pasted it together into a welcome back message for your students. And I know your teachers are so dedicated and so ready to do this work. And um, Zamorano has been understanding the importance of arts and transforming lives through the arts, you're actually showing how the arts are being integrated into this distance learning model and being very inspiring for everybody. So shout out to Derek and Zamorano, and Derek Merchantson, the principal, and then Derek, I think if your wife is watching too, shout out to her because I know she's a teacher at Zamorano and happy Teacher Appreciation Week to all of our teachers that are tuned in and watching this. Or you might not be watching because you are with your students at this point doing your distance learning. Um, all the questions around choice and enrollment and starting, we'll post some more information about that so you can make sure that you have um, access to what the enrollment options are going to be and we'll put um, put some links on there. It's also I'll go back to our um, what I said earlier, the um, Facebook, uh, sorry, the distance learning, somebody just sent another message, I missed that, distance learning website. There's FAQs in there that will answer a lot of the questions that I'm seeing in here. So if I'm skipping a question, it's because I know it's it's in the FAQ and I want to try to get to as people as I can. Um, all the choice questions, I see a lot of questions about that choice and pre-K and when are we opening There's themes to that and those are definitely in our FAQ page. Um, this is uh, Sine, Sine Sicola. I'm not sure if I pronounced your name right. Thank you for joining. You were recommending or maybe a suggestion about if we do a special segment on television for the high school graduations that we could post a senior picture with the names in the slideshow and put it on tv so everyone could see it not just some people are saying they can't use facebook you all obviously can use facebook or you wouldn't be here but some people were saying well what if we just do a tv broadcast and say that's a great suggestion that the kids that are coming the student committee that's working on graduation ideas they're coming up with what these virtual graduations could look like and I'll definitely share your idea with them. I think that's a great idea. Um, so that's really good. Um, see if I can uh, get the next question. Um, Roy, that's really from San Diego High. Thank you for joining. And thank you. You said you're uh, one of our SETs helping our students with disabilities at San Diego High. Thanks for all doing. And questions about crime, those are also on our um, on our FAQs page. Uh, when is the school year scheduled? All the schedule questions are on there, definitely. Uh, no Communications is watching this. Uh, Guillermina is uh, mentioning the principal at Hoover. She's been having great participation there. And everybody's working towards developing the virtual graduation ceremony. Are working on that as well, so that's from a Hoover parent. Um, and so I keep on moving here. It's so good to see all these good questions. I want to make sure I have anything. Um, I haven't many questions. Robin, I, I, you missed. You said I, uh, you said I skipped your question. Will there be any teacher layoffs? That is not something that we have planned at this time. I'm not sure how I missed the question earlier. Sorry about that. In our school, we're still considering that we have ESY, which is required for students with disabilities, and we also have credit recovery. So we're working on the plans for what that would look like. Rose Valencia, thank you for joining. Jose Serna, it's good to see you. Um, it's nice to um, have you join us. You wanted to know about the connection rate that we have over 90%. When do we get to 100%? On any given day, even when we're open during brick and mortar, we have um, on a daily attendance basis, it's not, it's not always 100%. Our goal for that 100% that kids would have a computer if they needed it, a device to be able to connect, and the internet connectivity. And that was the problem solving that we needed to do during our soft launch to ensure that everybody had a computer, was able to get their Chromebook if they needed one. One families needed more than one because they had more than one student learning at home. So I think that's really that we were able to get them connected. And in terms of how do we make sure they're all connected, that's the daily work of a school district is if a student's not participating in their learning, we want to understand why are they not participating. And we didn't want anybody to have the reason for non-participation be they didn't have a computer or they didn't have the internet. If somebody didn't have the that, that was a technical problem that we knew we needed to solve very early on. Now, beyond that, 
when kids aren't participating in their distance learning, if we've taken the computer and the connectivity off the table, what are the other reasons why they might not be participating? Is something going on in the family? Is the scheduling not working for them? Is there some families have both parents working in the healthcare profession and their schedules are very different. So we're wanting to customize. So I really encourage people to connect with their teachers and make sure that um, teachers are able to help you. If you're struggling with the schedule, one of the things I heard a parent say over the weekend was they're doing so much work and the schedule is so intense that they needed to have a break and they weren't going to do all the assignments that the teacher said because something big was going on in the family and the parent was making themselves feel guilty about it. Like, like I do this teacher saying all this work, but it's too much and we're getting overwhelmed. If that, that's happening, connect with the teacher. We don't want this to be a stressful time learning. Well, let's just say it this way. It is a stressful time for our entire country and for our state and for our city and for our little communities here. This is stressful. School shouldn't be one more thing that's adding to the stress that's already there. Our teachers are designing learning for you, for your families. And if that's not working, it's too much or it's not enough. Maybe you're needing more. Or maybe you're needing something different or maybe it's too rigid. Connect with your teacher. Connect with the principal. We understand that you're in very different circumstances and very different situations. And if it's not enough, we want to help. If it's too much, we want to help. So please connect with the teachers and say, hey, phone a friend. I need some ideas. I think in my future Facebook Lives um, next Monday, I might bring a guest on with me, um, some parents that I've been working with on what kinds of advice and supports are parents really needing at home. They need something that's going to help them, and they want like real-time help wave the white flag you're not giving me enough work you're giving me too much work or my students seems to be, they seem to be not getting enough exercise whatever that might be we're going to bring on some guest speakers to kind of help customize that and um, be supportive during this time uh, let's see Mar maritha Weso, thank you you said you wanted to send applause to miss potter and the staff at knox for posting a video on knox's website to encourage um, and revitalize our students. Thanks for calling that out. I appreciate that. Ms. Um, Potter at Knox is doing a good job. All our principals and teachers and staff are working so hard. Um, let's see. I'm way behind on the questions. So many have come in. I'm sorry. There's 87 comments on them as quickly as I can. I know it's getting close to time to wrap up. Um, let's see. I have here. You're um, you interested in translation and making sure we have more, more abilities for translation. Um, on our website, we have all the resources to make sure that we're able to translate. We'll get back to you on that. Uh, or please look there. We're translating live on any of our posts. We can do translation when we're having meetings. And then teachers have access to translation services at school as well or through their school. Alma Diaz, hi. Alma, I see that you just joined us for neighborhood schools enrollment options. It's good to have you on here. A lot of questions are coming for your department, so we'll definitely be show up with all the people that have questions for that. And Sean is saying thank you for the question. You guys are doing great. Nice to see you again. Uh, let's see. And, uh, um, Sean is asking if we can post the FAQ page link. Yes, we will definitely do that. We have our communications team watching this whole video and we oh, just posted it. There it is. Sorry, it's already on there. Um, okay. okay. So it's since I missed a bunch of questions, I'm scrolling quickly down to know to pass a couple. I want to make sure that we answer them. And those of you that said thank you, you appreciate how hard we're working. Well, I just want to tell you, we appreciate you. If you're a parent listening, we appreciate you. We appreciate how challenging this is and, and the ways that you're able to be our partners during this time. Our teachers are doing everything they can. I'm just so grateful. We'll end with our teacher appreciation. It's Teacher Appreciation Week. If you know a teacher, send them some love and just know that they'll remember it at the beginning of the broadcast I shared. This is something a student gave me for teacher appreciation a long time ago. It's an apple, but just re appreciation matters. We always say that matters. Make sure you're connecting with people. If you have a senior member in the community that you haven't called, have your students have do that. If you haven't been keeping a journal, it gets great to keep a journal. Um, next Monday, I might be bringing on another guest and we're building out some topics, basically taking the questions that we've been getting each week. This is our second Facebook Live. Uh, we're going to be using those to build more content each Monday so that we can continue to drill down on the questions and 
more than just the questions, the basic questions are on our FAQs page. When are we opening? What's happening in graduation? What will it look like? We'll keep keep updated on a daily basis on our FAQs page. And this is really a time for us to go deep to content and questions that you want more support on. So I really appreciate all of you and Cheryl Ward, if you're still watching, I miss you. It's gl I'm glad that you joined. And if all any of my friends that joined that I didn't say hi to, I'm sorry it came by very quickly, but really appreciate everyone for joining and for, for being here with us. Thank you all. And I'm still learning how to do Facebook Live, but it's great to have everybody here. We had oh, up to 150 people joining and 100 comments. So that's awesome. Thank you, everybody. See you next Monday at 11.